and welcome back to D16 tonight. Of course, if you've got a question, feel free to post it on our Facebook live stream. And remember, please post your sentiments in real time. If you like the responses to your questions, make sure to share your emoji. So our next question goes to uh, Fernando, and it is from Quentin Duenas. What is your opinion on the current status of the Guam Board of Education and John Fernandez? Should the legal counsel continue the process with the current leak or redo the investigation? Oh, that's a good one. I think the legal counsel needs to do what they were hired to do and let the board do what the board is supposed to do. Um, as part of the whole process, I think the investigation does need to be complete and then we need to, the people need to have access mm -hmm. to what it is that's going on. Regardless of, I think, what is going on within the inter internal workings of the board, it is something that's polarizing and the community wants to know and I think they have a right to know everything that's going on. Joe? Well, being, being formally from the board, for six years and being the chairman. Number one, what should have happened was when they recommended or they, they had the uh, motion to terminate, they first should have identified why it was being terminated. And then the bills in particular should have been voted by the board that that's the basis of the termination. And it's quite obvious that there's, there's commotion on who's in charge. Is it the legal counsel <coughs> or is it the board? And the board needs to take control of themselves and settle down and they need to start the investigation again and start it all over get back on track. Senator? Well, I do think that the Board of Education should complete the process. Of course, there's conversation right now in the media between the two attorneys, and uh, I hope that this, uh, this doesn't go all the way to court, but um, the, the board is the only entity in this island that can um, hire and fire the superintendent of education, not their attorneys, and uh, not, not the executive branch, not the legislative branch. So we need to allow this elected board that's also comprised of appointees to finish uh, the process. All right, thank you. Uh, we've got another question. It's a little bit uh, different uh, from George Jag. DMV currently avails the option for every driver's license applicant to be an organ donor. However, our hospitals are not equipped to accommodate such procedures. What would you do as senator to facilitate such medical opportunities are made available on island to help save lives, Joe? Well, you know, Nestor, being from formerly from uh, revenue and tax, um, when you apply for a driver's license, you check mark uh, organ donor or not. Uh, the only sad part is that uh, GMH, I think, if I'm correct, that law was put in place in the 90s, late 90s. Uh, GMH has not finished putting together the rules and regulations on how to, how to take care of that. If somebody passed away and his organ is available, who's going to take care of it? GMH is not ready for that because I even called them up uh, today and I asked them, what's going on with that issue? Because, you know, a lot of, I run into everybody and, they, and there's nothing going on. Nobody's uh, uh, set up to receive the organs. So in other words, so if there was somebody that needs the organ, they can't get it. Okay. Yeah, to answer that, we really need to talk to the uh, medical community and also the administration of the Guam Memorial Hospital. Um, if it's already um, in our, our, uh, as an option that we can put in our, li our driver's license, the mechanics of that, even if it's been done many years ago really has to be worked out by um, the medical profession and the administration. So I, I don't think we have a role as uh, legislators to pass something like that. That's an operational issue. How about you, Brianna? So it's a bunch of different things. Um, it, there are some administrative kinks that need to get worked out, such as, such as setting up the registry, setting mm -hmm. up the standard operating procedures. But going back, a lot of it is resources and, and staffing. You know, it, not any surgeon can just do a regular organ transplant. It really depends on the, the, uh, the surgeon or depends on the organ. So again, the support we put into GMH with growing it and creating more options is gonna better benefit people. So bringing in more of these specialty care doctors, some more, some more surgeons that are gonna be available because a lot of times it's at the drop of a dime that they need to have come do the surgery. Okay, and uh, Narissa, the next question is from Kenny Artero. What will you do to get Simon Sanchez High School back on track in the rebuilding process? Actually, there isn't anything at this point, given that uh, there's, a, um, there's a protest. We need to allow the procurement process to go through. Uh, for us to intervene at this point can actually create more problems and create more delays. So we need to allow this process to go through and to have the decision made by the OPA or even the courts. 
And you, Fernando? So there's not <laughs> much we can do with the situation right now because it's already in, not necessarily litigation, but it's already in mediation regarding the procurement. But what we need to finally do and say, okay, enough is enough. We've been complaining about procurement issues for so long. We need to go back to the laws, take a look, and see what we can do to make adjustments. While I have some suggestions to that, I don't have enough time to to go over it this evening. But I'll be happy to take questions later. Okay. And you, Joe? Well, yeah, you know, there, there's a procurement, procurement problem in the laws. And what they need to do is fix it. Because exactly what Dr. Anwar brought up. There, there's nothing much anybody can do right now but wait for the OPA. But we need to look at the procurement laws. And if elected, I will look at the procurement laws. And, and if, if somebody wants to protest a contract that's awarded, they're going to have to start putting money now into that business as a retainer to challenge a contract awarded. So that if they win it, they get their money back. If they lose it, the, all the expenses the government has, has incurred would go to, the, to pay off those expenses. Okay, we've got time for one last question. i go to you, uh, Fernando. Sure. Uh, from John Bagaforo. I'm currently enrolled at the Guam Trades Academy, preparing for a second career. Taking the recent issues with skilled workers on island and the federal government's delay in approving the entry of skilled workers in Guam, what are your opinions on creating legislation to provide funding so our people can learn a skilled trade? So there is funding available. Actually, Department of Labor just got, I think, a, another large grant for, as part of the Guam Registered Apprenticeship Program. So I think a lot of it is education with a lot of the businesses, which allow them to the businesses to get money for, in, for their employees to go to school, to hire them on as apprentices, also to assist with other costs associated with their employment. So I think ensuring that, that the policies and procedures guiding that is, is sound, very, very sound for that amount of money, and also expanding it to allow for other skills for individuals. Joe? Well, you know, GCC is, is, is the school to go. And what they need to do is that if there's money out there, then let's get the advertisement out there, let's promote this, and let's get everybody to go to school so we can start offsetting that, that shortfall. All right. And Marissa? And we should support Guam Community College, but I've also um, introduced a bill that would um, establish a trust fund for our uh, graduates of the public schools so they would be able to go to GCC or UOG. And we need to start building our local skilled force so that we would not have to do, have to uh, import or, or bring in H2 workers. I believe that the key to that is again providing uh, our students a sense of aspiration for them to proceed to either GCC or UOG. Okay, we'd like to thank you. We have time for a final comment from each of you. Uh, maybe about 30 seconds if you could, uh, Joe. <laughs> oh, um, number one, you know, like I mentioned earlier, Nestor, I'm number eight on the ballot on the Democrat side. Um, my slogan's, it's not about the easy way, but, but the right way. I like to find, uh, if elected, uh, find, find ways to bring some financial uh, stability in the government and let's adequately fund the Department of Education, the, the Guam Moore Hospital, so that we don't have to get a loan for that, and take care of the police officers so we can start curving the crimes that are going on in Guam. Okay. Senator Durando? Yes. Well, I ran on the notion again, the belief that if we provide uh, equal opportunity and fair treatment for everyone, we would be a much more successful community. So to that end, um, I would like to introduce the first generation initiative so that we have more first generation business owners and, and to provide those people who have never had the opportunity to be business owners to, to give them that that uh, chance to do so. We also should provide um, more of our students the opportunity to be college graduates or graduates of the community college. And the way that we do that is to start with K-12 and uh, to give them that aspiration to go further. And Fernando. So the number one item on my platform is, is government efficiency. You know, it sounds like a broad term to many and, and how does it relate to them? Well, just put it simply, I'm going to give, if elected, I have all the systems to put into place to give the people of Guam the most professional government they've ever seen. That is a promise I will absolutely make. I have no intention to stay, to be a career sen senator or politician. This is something I feel that's just a duty to benefit the people and give back to the island. And at the end of the day, I humbly ask them for their vote. My name is Fernando Barcina Sistevis, number seven on the Republican side of the ballot. Thank you very much, and we'd like to thank all of our guests tonight, and thank you for joining us. Good luck on voting on November 8th. Remember, your vote is your voice.